Okay, in the tomb of set still. Let's hopefully finish up this level. I don't know how much of it is really left. Hopefully I'll be able to get it done in time. So last time uh, Ahmed lit some oil in the room. He's going to have to do that again in a different run, but first got to let him in. Nice camera angle there. Yeah, there's a small mini pack there. And then this is the oil room you need to light up, but there is a gate blocking the way, which I have to move. So I have to go up through all these hallways. I think that gate moves later, I'm not sure when or why. Whatever. So you pull the chain and groan, and then he comes in. And some creepy music plays for some reason. I don't know why, there's nothing particularly creepy about this. Aside from maybe the way that he like slid across the ground there because of bad scripting. But anyway, he lights all that on fire, makes it turn into what appears to be lava. And here we've got something that almost resembles a puzzle. We've got to jump on all these tiles with light coming out of them. If you touch any of the darkened ones, then the torches will go out and you have to go through a whole bunch of crap to reset the whole puzzle and whatnot. So luckily I got it right on my first try, and we get the timeless sands. Which we'll be using in a bit. But first, I've got a secret to investigate. Actually, two secrets. After we climb a very long ladder. A very, very long ladder. So, um... As we wait for this to happen, this would be a good time for me to make a joke or something. But I've got nothing. Whatever. So anyway, uh, here, you can. I'm going to ignore that lever for now. I could pull it, but whatever, I'll be back. Uh, I'm going to save here just to be safe. Because you got to make a few risky jumps here. Jumping right now, I'm on the headdress of the Sphinx. And you definitely don't want to fall off that. Jump over here. And we find a secret with a box of shotgun shells. And a large muddy pack. I'm not sure what the whole point of going to all these secret places is if I'm not going to be using the things that I find in them, but... Whatever, I said I'd get all the secrets. And there are challenges to get, and challenges are occasionally fun. So I'm gonna get my make bib, uh, the spare hip, the asparagus. And then, now I'll pull this lever. And you'll see what it does as soon as I drop down here. Luckily, going down the ladder is a lot faster than going up it, because I can just do the drop and catch method. Yeah, it opened up this gate for more shotgun shells. We get the blue variety, which are wide shots. I guess it like gives you a bigger angle when you shoot. I don't really understand how that works, but whatever. And the normal ones. I run into a wall. I run into a spider web. Whatever. So anyway, now I come in here, and here's Ahmed again. And something scares him. Something written on the wall, which we are not told about. He certainly doesn't tell us. And even though Lara can read hieroglyph hieroglyphics, she doesn't read it out loud for the players to find out. So we're left to our own devices to figure out what that could possibly mean. I'm assuming we'll find out in, like, the next level. Because there is a pretty noteworthy event that happens there. Who, the who shoots scorpions? It's a bug. Can't you step on it or something? Unless it has like a really hard exoskeleton or something. Alright, um... I think I can just drop in here. Up on this thing we find more shotgun shells and another small medipack. How redundant. I'm gonna be finding a lot of this throughout the game. Whatever, you jump up here, because she can jump like 50 feet. 
and then we put the timeless sands into this thingy. And it's raining sand. Hallelujah, it's raining sand. And all that sand had to come from somewhere. It came from up here. Which means that now there's an opening available that wasn't there before. Which the game is sure to show us in very close detail. Because I guess this is like still close to the beginning of the game. They're trying to be easy on us, giving us hints where to go and whatnot. Unlike later on, when you have no idea where you're going at all. So we go all the way back. And that should be it for this level. This went by faster than I thought it would. So yeah, jump up and go here. And then that leads to the next level, which I don't remember the name of. So we slide into a loading screen. And I do nothing to make the loading screen interesting. Okay, I'm going to save because there's a secret immediately. Right here. Uh, jump on that as you're sliding down. Very easy to miss. You get, is it just a medipack or is there more stuff? Nope, that's it. Whatever. Alrighty. So, where am I now? Burial chambers, okay. It's still part of the tomb of Set. That did what? I guess it rem Oh, yeah, we're good. Okay. Uh, this part is not challenging at all, but you can screw it up. You slide on, pick up the weird starfish thingy, and then immediately you gotta jump out of the way because as soon as the. Yeah, that happens. Those things on the wall up there, when they meet, it starts shooting spikes. And if you jump to the left, you find a secret. If you jump to the right, you don't find anything. I guess. Doesn't really matter, though, because if you did go to the right, I think it's still possible to jump through the spikes and get there. So whatever. Uh, nothing here. Here we got another spike trap. You just kind of wait, and jump through, nothing too hard. Destroy some priceless pottery. All for getting a medipack that I didn't want. And we get an identical trap, hooray! Okay, so here is a room of certain doom with spikes and whatnot. But luckily I picked up the starfish, or as they call it, the Hand of Orion, to make this spikes go away, and instead we get an annoying thing. Now the normal way you're supposed to do this run is to grab onto those edges and just shimmy across all the way around the whole thing, which takes like a freaking week to do. So I'm just going to skip and jump out and hope for the best, and I saved, just in case I screwed up. Which I didn't. There were a few items there I could have picked up. I didn't really feel like bothering. Um, eh, I could go back, but who cares. So, we enter. A thing. A very ominous room. Look, there is a treasure on it. I wonder if it will be significant. Here's a hint. It's the most significant item in the game. But I'm not going to pick it up yet, because if I do that, then I can't do this. I go over here. And there is a little passage. With items I don't want, but it's a secret, so I'm going to do it. 
and that will close itself off as soon as you get the treasure off of the sarcophagus, so that's why you've got to do it now. And since I have a little bit of time left and, tr and picking that thing up off of it triggers a cutscene that will take too long, I'm just going to check all these bits and see if anything's in them, because I don't remember if there is. You can probably stop watching now. You probably could have stopped watching before it started, because nothing is happening, but that's the nature of this run. Uh, I guess there's a small, small mini pack here, okay. Because you definitely expect to find magical health restoring items inside a tomb that nobody's ever been in. Well, maybe somebody's been in it, but I don't think so, because there's like curses and whatnot. So yeah, next time we get that thing.